We next, now we have Dr. Ajay Rora, who's a senior vitreoretinal consultant at uh, New Delhi. And he's going to talk about the role of suprachoroidal steroids. So we've talked about the other forms, other forms of delivery, and he's going to tell us of a new form of delivery, which he believes is very safe. Uh, <clears throat> good afternoon, and at the outset, I must thank uh, KSOS and Dr. Srini for giving me this opportunity of uh, coming to Drishti 2022. Uh, Dr. Prakash has already just talked about the role of uh, intravitreal periocular steroids. I'll be discussing something which I have been working on, <coughs> the delivery of steroids into the supracoloidal space uh, in various conditions of macular edema. Uh, and it's uh, really shown us good response. Uh, I will be particularly uh, taking, talking about intermediate uveitis in, uh, in, in this particular lecture. So these are the various routes by which the drugs can be given to the eye. You can either give them topically, periocular, intraocular. The best practical route at this point of time is intravitreal because it uh, takes the drug closer to the retina and the choroid. But it has caused complications like cataract, glaucoma, endophthalmitis, retinal or vitreous hemorrhage, vascular occlusion, and retinal detachment. Normally, supracoloidal space is a potential space and cannot be visualized, but in some cases, uh, you can visualize the supracoloidal space on an OCT. So, <clears throat> when a drug is given into the supracoloidal space, like this latex blue dye, which was injected in the uh, supracoloidal space, it spreads almost instantaneously and occupies almost 50% of the supracoloidal space, which basically means that the delivery to the posterior segment of a drug injected in the supracoloidal space is quite extensive. Also, we can inject a larger volume. <coughs> it's been theoretically said that if you can actually go ahead and inject almost up to about 1 ml fluid. We never inject that much, but yes, it can be done. The basic problem is that it is a blind procedure and it is in a potential space and needs proprietary microneedles. There have been various studies to show that uh, Zuprata, which was CLSTA, which was made by Clearside Biomedicals, uh, which, is, uh, which has been shown to be useful in cases of intermediate uveitis, and uh, multiple studies which have shown the effectivity, and it goes b it, it is beyond uh, the thing that uh, it, it works, it definitely works. And you must remember that when you inject a drug into the supracoloidal space, this space is blocked anteriorly at the level of the ora serrata and posteriorly at the level of the optic nerve. So it does not theoretically cause glaucoma, it does not cause cataract, and it delivers the drug to the posterior segment. The problem are that there is a proprietary methodology available by the ClearSet Biomedical and this costs a lot. One injection may cost, it's not yet available in the country, but may cost anything over 30,000 rupees. And a micro catheterization of the supracoloidal space by Med1, which has not been discontinued. Then you have this Jugard, which people have done, and many of you may have attempted it, of using a 23 gauge and a 30 gauge needle, making a needle out of it, which projects about 1,000 microns beyond the needle tip, and that goes perpendicularly into the supracoloidal space. But then, if you have injected it and seen that it may not actually every time inject the drug. So, what we said was, what we thought was, can we inject? with a normal 30 gauge needle into the supracoloidal space, can it be safe? So we did, we, we did a study where we thought we'll construct a device which can inject the drug into the supracoloidal space. We also thought that is there a claim which may be made by ClearSet that Zuprata is better than the uh, Triamcinon available in our country and to test the ease and safety of uh, uh, injections in the human eyes and I'll just rapidly go through it. 
So this was the scanning electron microscopic studies we did, and we found that orocot is as good as zuprata. So there is no reason why you should be thinking of zuprata. So this is zuprata, and this is orocot scanning electron microscopy, and it goes to a 30 gauge needle. We constructed this device, which is used for suprachoroidal injection, and we did animal experiments. And you see, this is a goat side the injection being done. You will see the injection being done into the suprachoroidal space. Then I will dissect out the suprachoroidal space and demonstrate that the drug has gone into the suprachoroidal space. We also inject it in the goat side. You can see here this uh, whitish material, which is triamcinolon. And then we did a UBM analysis of triamcinolon into suprachoroidal space, meth uh, uh, methyl cellulose and helon. And you can see here the suprachoroidal space is expanded by helon. We went ahead and did uh, the uh, human studies. And uh, the, therefore, this um, uh, you can see here that the device is being used for injecting into the uh, eye. This normally I inject it in the inflotemporal or the uh, inflonasal quadrant. We did OCT analysis of the scleral thickness and found out that these two quadrants are the best to choose. And we have nomograms for the device to choose based upon the thickness of the sclera. So these were the preliminary studies. And you can see here, this was a diabetic patient who had uh, received anti-VEGFs and Ozodex, and you can see the amount of edema in the right eye and the left eye. There was a time in the country when Ozodex was not available. By that time, we were ready with the device, and you can see how beautifully the macular edema subsides after suprachoroidal injection. This is pre-Skeeta. This is 14th day after Skeeta, 34th day, and 70th day. So we found from this study that the preservative-free triamcinolone can be safely given by the suprachoroidal device using a 30-gauge needle. We also demonstrated the effectivity and safety of Skeeta and varied pathology. Uh, in, uh, so we had about, now I have almost about 98 eyes, and we have had a follow-up on these patients, and it is effective for about 88 days. We did this small study on, on uveitis, where all our patients were on anti-glaucoma drugs. None of the patients developed any retinal collateral injury and required any filtering surgery. Then we went ahead and did something more. We thought that we want to increase the effectivity of uh, our trimcelon. So I bought a centrifuge and started centrifuging the trimcelon. And of the 1 ml of orocot, we used to throw away 0.8 ml, take 0.2 ml, and then inject 0.1 ml of this, which means we're injecting almost to the level of anything from 15 to 20 milligrams of the drug into the suprachoroidal space. So we did a study, which was a small one, certainly a small number. Nine suprachoroidal centrifuge transplant injections were given in four eyes. I will share the data uh, with you and show you how they work. So this is a patient with an intermediate uveitis who received triamcelon. The effect lasted for four months. You can see here the edema has subsided. Uh, the effect lasted for four months. The macular edema recurred after four months. Then we gave a centrifuge triamcelon to the same patient. This was injected in, in June 2020, and we followed up the patient, and this went up to January 21. And sometime next year, next year in March, the, the patient's edema came back. So it lasted almost for eight months, which is almost double the time of what Ozodex lasts, and it cost you virtually nothing. And then we injected again, and next time the effect lasted for almost seven months. And uh, this patient has now been on, on, uh, on the last injection, has uh, followed up almost for about eight and a half to nine months, and she has not recurred. This is another patient who had I treated in 2014 with systemic steroids. The patient had, uh, had uveitis, have, was a case of, uh, 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 was shown to be a case of TB positive, sarcoid negative. And this patient was treated with Skeeta. He said, I will not take systemic steroids. We gave him Skeeta. And the patient responded well. So this is the results of those three patients which we have followed over the period of time. 
And from this we found that centrifuge triamcinolone could be safely and consistently injected through a 30 gauge needle. The correct placement, the moment you are in the correct plane, the supracolloidal uh, in the supracolloidal space, the drug flows. If there is a resistance, you are not in the correct plane. If you inject in the horizontal plane, there will be pain. So do not inject in the horizontal plane. We put the patients in anti-glaucoma drugs, drops, but we generally stop them in about three to six weeks. So uh, centrifugation has allowed us to extend the period of effectivity to almost seven to eight months and extended the duration of action uh, and it is, seems to be a promising treatment. This is a small sample study. We need to enlarge it and maybe Arvind and other institutions could get involved and do this study. It will be very useful. Uh, the only risk is risk of infection. We do not know the orocot which is applied to us or any other drug which you use should be sterile. So if you inject on the supracolloidal space that it is not a, that is the only danger. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'll be uh, happy to answer. I have a small non-academic slide. I want to share it. And uh, this is a non-academic slide. Uh, me and Rajesh are standing for elections next year. That's the only way I can communicate with you. He'll be secretary. I, I'm standing for treasurer. Would like to see your support. That's all. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ajay Arora. And it's nice to know about, you know, newer modes of delivery of uh, local steroid. Thank yeah. you once again. Thank you. Uh, I would like to call Dr. Minija for her talk on systemic steroids and its optimal use in UBITIS.